Let's do it. Okay. I'm not in charge of this. Sorry. All right. <laughs> I call this Board of Selectmen's meeting to order for November 9, 2021. Roll call. Jake Thompson, Leslie Dyer, Eric Gasparini, Town Manager, Elizabeth Bunker, Deputy Town. <laughs> minutes approve the minutes from October 26, 2021 meeting. So the special town, the public, the public hearing. hearing, excuse me, and the minutes. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Oh, sorry, I, I did not vote. All right, you he, weren't here. He was not here. He abstains. Yes, thank you. Number three, approve and sign treasurer's warrant number 19. So moved. Second. All those in favor? For approve agenda, I believe we have two additions, correct? Under 7A appointments and resignations, we have five sewer, six library. I move we approve the agenda as amended. Second. Seconded. All those in favor? Five, communications broadband article. Someone had asked that I share this with the board. Yeah. I finally found out how much it's going to cost to get hooked up by Spectrum. And it's not a small amount. I'll just mm -hmm. say that. But they do it for me. I'm not paying $7,000 to do it. Are you going to pay me pay $7,000 to get hooked up? Oh, no. no. That's not even the total cost. It said it would cost $15,000. They would pay eight, and I would have to pay the rest. To get internet. To get Hooked yeah. up by Spectrum. Wow. Yes. I mean, where you left it last was for me to follow up with um, the providers that are here, and I have not connected with them yet. I talked to um, Kendra Joe at the Institute was the only follow up I had done. I just haven't spent time to connect with Melinda at Spectrum and um, Jeff at Consolidated. I believe we. Did actually ask you to write an actual RFP or prepare an RFP, not just for a spectrum of consolidated, but whatever other provider might be interested. Right. The I think that was covered. Um, it requires a lot more input from the board. So I know the, the exactly what you want in the RFP if we're going to put it up to bid. Um, suggestion was to just check with the incumbents to see what the appetite was. Um, some of them are more interested and willing to go after some of the grant funds. Um, they're going to likely be the lower cost option because we've already got infrastructure here. But certainly, the RFP would require us to have a more in depth conversation about exactly what you wanted me to put in for someone to respond with. I mean, just if you want something with the detail and they're going to really identify all the miles of road, all the drop location, and everything. Um, but I, I, I need more of that. I don't, have, I don't think the committee is at a point where they're maybe. But we wouldn't be able to apply for any of this broadband funding as a town because we rejected it. I'm assuming there's still an avenue in which we could if we were to partner. I mean, if, I'm assuming some of these allow us to. I mean, it depends on the funder. I think some of them were geared more towards fiber versus wireless solutions. Some of them I'm assuming are leaving the door open for municipalities to partner with someone in the difference between the municipality creating a enterprise or a business and kind of having its own utility versus partnering with a utility. 
Yeah, I mean, I think that, I'm assuming that's still an option for some of these. <clears throat> what are the chances we hear back from anyone in time? Like, do they just, I feel like they're, you know, the window is closing on getting an application in, and there's no way we're going to hear back from any of these providers because they, so why it's been my experience, in my opinion, that they don't really care about expanding their coverage and making it better. So I would be surprised if we hear anything back in time to then get any of these dollars. I, so why don't we just put the application in first? Because the town voted against it. Because it was going to put property taxes up, but this is grant money that we're looking at. You can't guarantee you'll get any of it. No, that's true. But you can't get it at all if you don't apply for it. The town didn't vote to approve it, so we have no plan in place. Well, the town never did. We didn't even vote. put it up for a vote. It was yeah. a survey taken. It was a survey and then the two public hearings, and then okay. obviously selection was made so it was brought up, but. That's the point B though, is that through this process, we can ask providers that can consolidate it, you know, if they're interested in pursuing monies that are available both in, and now that the federal government has passed their infrastructure bill, there'll be more money available, presumably. Um, and what that looks like for them improving their service. You know, I don't think that people are opposed to better internet. I think the opposition was to pay the town, it. the town of Vinyl Haven actually owning that network. And increasing property taxes is what I would yeah. argue and, the majority yeah. of people. And the liability of owning, you know. Right, uh, as a like a business. But as far as improving internet access, no, I think. I think everybody wants that. <laughs> That's not what I heard. That's not what I heard at all in those meetings, but. That's my personal take on it. So I'm obviously for getting better internet because I need it to work, but it's not a priority for everyone else. So I'm open to any suggestions. I mean, it can hurt to fill out the application for the grant money. For what, what are we applying for? As a publicly owned utility, as a private partnership, because then you need public private partnership. I'm assuming you need the other party to be a part of that application process. Whatever it takes. I mean, <coughs> if there's grant well, money we, out there. We don't have anyone to work on that right now either, do we? Mm, uh, no, uh, we don't. So. So we're just going to light up by the wayside. I, I don't have an. I don't have an answer. Does anyone else? Because. We don't have anyone to work on the application process, right? That's the bottom line. We have right to now. hire someone at this point, too. Right. We have to, to hire someone. or a volunteer, someone who's going to volunteer. To do that. And there was a lot of hesitation from people that we heard from that they don't even want any money spent on it. Am I incorrect in that? No. And in fact, we made a motion that town funds would not go towards, or I should say, Employee time on you know on the clock employee time would not go towards right. Oh, it's three two. Do you remember? Well, that being said, we can, if this board so chooses, we can commit staff time and we have money in the budget. On broadband. What kind of application are we looking at, Andy? No idea. I haven't looked at any of them. Okay. I mean, it was it was pretty well known that there was going to be this money coming out when we had those meetings. So I uh, got voted down. I mean, everyone knew that there was going to be this big chunk of money coming out, or they assumed it was coming out, and they still. Or pretty set against it, I think. I mean, that's just the way I've, I was looking at the meeting because they were all saying, or not everyone was saying, but there was numbers thrown around that we could get half of it paid for, or three quarters of it paid for, and people still didn't seem to care that we were getting money at those meetings that I was at anyway. 
I think the biggest, one of the biggest negatives was the fact that the town might have been the owner of the of the business or whatever you the, the um, utility. utility and that would have been really risky because if we didn't have customers mm -hmm. what are we going to do right. and or a lot of people weren't interested in becoming a customer because they don't need to have the high speed you know they live in town they can they get what they want I don't think that it was necessarily that nobody wants to have a better internet. It was just the town definitely, and I agree, the town should not, in my opinion, should not be the owner of the utility. It would cost, it would have cost us a fortune. Okay. So it's just. That's so in the meantime, Everything. Unless Spectrum or Fairpoint wanted to go after a grant, I mean, we could partner with that. Or the, what is it, a grant or what is it? Grant application. Yeah. 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 The only thing we're up against is, you know, to be competitive like with some of like the downtown funding, for example. And I don't know if these are all set up the same way, but most of them generally are, is that something's got to be put in. And so whether, whether it's enough for the town to say we're willing to go after the grant for one of the incumbents if they want to partner with us and, and our contribution to the project with them is to match and the contribution to match the grant is their commitment to build. I don't know if that alone would be enough to satisfy it or if we could get that to work, but a lot of times you got to be able to show the grantor that the applicant's got something invested and putting something in it too, um, unless these are you know, not asking for that. I don't, again, there's going to be a few of them out there, I'm sure, but I haven't. So would it be worth it to reach out to Spectrum and Consolidated to see if they would be willing to partner, or is it just something we should continue on? I imagine it hurt any. No, I mean, see if they're interested. You know, see if they're interested in improving their service to the island, especially if it doesn't cost them out of pocket or not much out of pocket then fantastic and they and they still have the liability of owning the infrastructure of course that's what i mean that's what i would suggest okay, I do. Does Matt have any um, ability to work on something like this, Andy? Um, I don't. Depends how involved it ends up becoming. I'm sorry? Depends how involved it ends up becoming. I mean, I wouldn't, you know, balancing what you know, his work plan is, wouldn't throw a whole grant application at him. If there's just a couple of quick things to look at, which which ones are we talking about? Is this only the one that this article mentions or the multiple sources and you know, might be able to have him help figure out which ones are open, available, and by you know, through which time, but. Um, well, without actually bought, reaching out to anybody yet, or maybe you'll have to, to answer my question, but you know, between now and our next meeting, just let us know, you know, if you can find out what that grant application looks like mm -hmm. and, you know, what the, you know, time timeline is. If it's a 10,000 page application or if it's a 10 page application, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And that'll give, I think that'll give this board a better understanding of how to direct you to proceed. Reach out to and then maybe, and maybe, I mean, I'm not going to tell you, know, what Andy knows what he's doing, but yeah, maybe presumably somebody working for Spectrum knows about what this grant application is going to be. I mean, I'm sure they have a whole firm of grant writers. And with those results, maybe the town will be more accepting of, of the proposal. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. We'll, well, we have, seriously doubt it. Well, we'll give people the yeah. opportunity. It can't hurt to look into it. I mean, yeah. it's money that is here waiting mm. for people to apply. Yeah, people did want it before. Well, 
they didn't, like, from what Pam said, it sounds like they didn't want it because it would be owned by the town. I don't know, Andy, mm -hmm. so, would you be willing to see what you can find out and, okay. Let's move on. Six speakers from the floor. <laughs> no, well, if you're here to talk about the guardrail and the round pond, that's not here. There's budget items for it. Well, are there any other speakers from the floor? <laughs> no, then why don't we move to 9A, Water District Round Pond Guardrail? Yeah, um, basically, I'm just here to request that board at least uh, consider further protections of Round Pond. We've had a few accidents in the last year that have been pretty close to spills, mm -hmm. accidents that have been bad enough that the DEPs donated a boom to us because they have noticed it is. Uh, you know, an active threat. And we're in the process of getting that set up, but that's not in place. We don't have any controls for that. Um, it would basically be, I mean, beyond for Round Pond, we would shut down and move to Poly, which hasn't been done in a long time. The water quality is worse. And then it would be a cleanup operation. So I think mm -hmm. just considering extending that uh, protection further and maybe doing it at, in the form of a guardrail. Um, because I think it's going to be the easiest cleanup is just preventing that. So that I don't have, you know, any numbers or anything like that. It's mostly just a petition to look into that for as far as that one goes. I mean, we've had the obvious real close call in the spring that probably would have been DP involved if they'd known, if anyone had known about what happened, when it happened. I mean, we would have had people on the scene and just a couple of weeks ago had them not far. I mean, it wasn't. It's not like the stone didn't keep them out, but it was close enough. That yeah. Could have, could have been right in the pond just as easy. So uh, I think it's a matter of time. And, well, and the guard, and you can never prevent all the you know, risks, but I think we can do more. But you know, again, I don't have a past budget. So well, that's well, what speaking of which, our budget process is coming up in the next couple months, at least starting in the next couple months. So that might give time, you know. Andy knows how much guardrail costs by the foot, and then whatever other work might need to be done, groundwork might need to be done to probably have, might have to, re might have to remove the. Is that <laughs> is that no. State Road? No, no. Um, no. just the no, just the beginning of ours. Yeah, I don't just know. Be there's there's other options, alternatively, like a berm, earthen berm. Yeah, I don't know. If there's more than that. Yeah, something we'd have to get the engineers to look at. I assume. I mean, if you want to get any alternatives, then I would definitely think we'd have to get the engineers involved to let us know like, kind of what meets standards for road safety. I would think a guardrail would work. Though. The guardrail replacement, I probably can just reach out to a couple companies and see if I can get quotes from a couple companies um, for the budget process. Um, All sooner. we need to know is how many feet long that is for that, right? Yeah, generally that that works. I think you know, given what it is, they Probably may, may not want to. I mean, if that's all placed grout along the road's edge there, um, mm -hmm. they're not going to be able to. They may or may not be able to drive posts in there really easy. Right. Um. So, I mean, they might they might need to come and take a look at it and um, just see what it is. I mean, they've seen them drive. They drove post right through the the rock and ground up at the bridge project, but eventually it gave way to to, to soil. So. I don't know if that's the case up there. Yeah. Could always go back to rebuild the old road back. A different route. Yeah. Goes out through. There is, yeah. an old, there is an old road there. There is. That's where I used to go. I can't remember. I do. <laughs> I went out there on my, in my little wagon. <laughs> so you can still see the road bed if you, if you know where it starts, but sure. I mean, that would cost a small fortune. Yeah. 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 Mentioned protected <laughs> rain there. Right, yeah. Um, well, um, it's in the watershed, that's for certain. Mm -hmm. But any preventative measures we could take, because that really should be extended up near, a, like when you come down around the corner before you get to the pond. That's all open there. You, can, you know, it really probably should go up that far even yeah. to start, but. 
Not on Indian news. <laughs> but we definitely need to think about something, mm -hmm. doing something. Right, I, man, I brought this up to you, I think, before over the years. Especially when some of these vehicles don't get reported. And <laughs> the last year was in the 10 days before. Yeah. I assume it's one of those engines on last year. You never know. You can still see it. See yeah. if you can get run home first. Yeah. yeah. It's like somebody stole your vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I think <laughs> also, um, let's see. All right. Are we, everyone get on A, 9A? Going back to seven now. No, we're going to go to nine C, wastewater uh, pump replacement. So there is a wastewater pump at the Main Street pump house uh, that has a seal fail. Um, and we looked into what that means for that pump. And uh, it's highly unlikely that's a, a like a false alarm because the way they're designed has a float and not like a conductor that can get tripped. So um, it was, it was um, compared, it was told to me that it, it's similar to, you know, having your low oil light come on or something. That pump's still running, but uh, one day it will completely stop and the whole pump will be dry. So um, because of the importance of that pump station, uh, it serves the whole east side, everything shy of the fire station, really, um, and, and Main Street. Uh, I am... Suggesting that gets that gets replaced. I got a proposal here uh, from Williamson. Who is it? The same one that was in the email. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, no, I don't think it was. I just got this at four thirty. So, oh, okay. um, so this includes uh, this includes the labor and also the completion of other work on Leo's Lane. So uh, there's twelve twelve hundred fifteen hundred of it that goes to Leo's Lane. Um, and that that one that was in the email did not include labor. So this is basically we we worked out some of the details of like whether we need an explosion proof pump or or you know, cord length things like that to get a more accurate number. And then he added his labor in for the for the whole trip. So that's what uh, basically if you it's around eleven thousand once you get rid of Leo's lane. Um, yeah, I mean it, if that pump goes down. It's a four to six week uh, quoted head uh, lead time. So, you know, it's, it, I would say it'd be best to purchase it, start that. And, you know, we may, we may get it in before it fails. I think we will. Um, and if it does fail, it's redundant. We have another pump, but then then we're just have to be staring at that pump all the time, make sure it's running because if that stops, then everything on the east side stops. So, so um, I mean, we can drop in other pumps and, and Bring stuff up temporarily, but that's a lot of labor to be avoided. So I think th that's my suggestion to the town. Um, I would suggest approving slightly more than that because his last, obviously, the last job came in, and there's another twelve fifteen hundred dollars on this for the last job because it's the problem of not being out here to look at the site before you do it. You know, you come in, turns out you need another relay installed or something like that. So jobs can tend to be a little more expensive. Mm -hmm. That's the nature of it. I think as he works with us more, he'll be more familiar with that system and have more accurate quotes. The Leo's Lane was his first job, so. So, um, um, no, yeah. sorry. No, um, of course. Uh, about a month or so ago, we approved money for new pumps, correct? It was, was, or, the, or one spot? Wheels. It was, we, uh, this, this, this is the same project. That was the control unit. For the uh, oh, that is okay. So, and, and those are no longer available. So that was oh. a new control unit. Yeah. Okay. This, so this is, this is for an actual pump. Oh, okay. That will still run on the old control unit, but can be you know, changed over to the new one when that time comes. Well, I mean, we need the pump. <laughs> it is what it is. Right. If it's going to fail, it's going to fail. Is there money in the budget for it? Or? Um, we appropriate 50 grand this year for repairs. Um, for the reserve. So my recommendation is that the money come from the reserve funds for the wastewater. Is the fifteen thousand enough? 
I haven't, I haven't seen the newest one. It says, it it says just under this 13. includes alleles. Laney said it was another 1200. So I would yeah. assume that That's it's 11,000. 11, yeah. I mean, 10% is this quote is just under 13. Okay, yeah. so 15 should be. Uh, yeah, I mean, so we should be able to return. That's over 10%. That. Continuity. That yeah. would yeah. I think that would be fine. Yeah. yeah. And I did ask for him to give a pretty conservative quote because he should be asking for that. So we wouldn't be going. Right. Okay. So I, what do we have? We do have to make a motion, Andy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Make a motion. We take fifteen thousand out of the reserve fund for the ski pump from the wastewater reserve. From the wastewater right. reserve, I'd, I'd suggest uh, the wording up to. Up to. Okay. Yeah. And then if it's less than that, it stays there. Up to fifteen thousand out of the wastewater reserve fund. Second. Seconded. Any more discussion? Questions? All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome to stay if you want. But if you're not go, we don't blame you. Get out of here. You can take my. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We will go back to seven. A appointments and resignations, seven A one cemetery committee. I move we appoint Michael Bunker Jr. to uh, cemetery trustees board for a term ending June twenty twenty three. Second. All those in favor? Yeah. Was that all there was for the cemetery? Family affair. Oh yes. I don't know what he's thinking. Seven A two <laughs> Lanes Island Stewardship Committee. Can we do them jointly? Do they have to be separate? I make a motion we appoint Pam Rumbeck and Janet Crossman to two terms ending on June twenty twenty two for the Lanes Island Stewardship Committee. Second. All those in favor? Seven A three Planning Commission. This is a David Wiley wants to resign, right? I make a motion to accept David Wiley's resignation. <coughs> Second. Second. All those in favor? What What if we didn't accept his resignation? <laughs> we have to continue on. Like, yeah. He just didn't show up. <laughs> Seven A four waste watchers. This was Heather wanted to be added, correct? Um, yeah. yeah. It looks like we have some seat. Do we have to carve each other twenty three or twenty four? There's three vacancies, it looks like. Darlene's written her in at 23. We do um, typically go for the shorter term. I'm just yeah. asking a question before someone made a moment. Yeah. I want to make sure. Mm -hmm. I don't see one here. I don't see one. Solid, solid waste solid composting waste. and the cycle. Oh, 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 okay. oh, there it is. I make a motion that we appoint Heather's, is Heather Sweet is right. Heather Sweet is right. To the vacancy 623 on the Watches Committee. Second. In the discussion, all those in favor. All right. Seven A five sewer. Uh Tanya Robichaud has submitted her resignation. The motion to accept the resignation. Second. All those in favor. Okay. Seven A six library. Uh, Maggie Olson has resigned from the library trustees. I'll make a motion to accept Maggie Olson's resignation to the library trustee. Second. Yeah. All those in favor? Seven B planning commission report. I'm assuming that there isn't one since there's no one here, or you have something. <laughs> okay, then we'll move on to 7C. Excuse me, Road Commissioner report. I didn't have the data entered in no. the factory in this program. Uh, they have been trying to finish up grading and helping when they did Tiptoe Mountain Road last thing, yesterday. I think they were going to try and head out to Granite Island Road and try and do that one today. Yeah, I think that was the last one that they had to grade and seal. Yeah, I think those are done. I'm trying to work on um, getting the uh, trucks in gear for plow season. Um, Did we get the truck back that had the 
issue with the engine with the low power or whatever. We must have that back by now. Are we came back. Um, the light came on again the other day for, I can't remember if they did a regen it or not, but you know, it's just, it's, it's the issue they've had with that ever since we've had it, um, that diesel engine. Um, so it's not so much continued, I guess apparently there'll be a thing. Um, the band's resignation from road commissioner, um, that is working through this week or through Thursday this week. Um, so I'm trying to work with him to figure out kind of put in a memo uh, or my report, I think. Uh, I see. Just a few points in there to think about, um, but trying to been working um, very much trying to figure out how best to help with that transition and help fill the gaps that he was up there every morning um, and trying to figure out how to keep help keep things flowing. Um, still down a foreman in this position, so um, and then the winter, so it'll be interesting. A lot of time spent figuring that out. So we have four open vacancies now, correct? Correct. Uh, for the six. Six? Yeah, we got the deputy clerk, uh, public works foreman, uh, ambulance director, road commissioner, uh, road commissioner, custodian, and the community planning position that we had had. Okay. Not good. So only three of them are posted at the moment. That's in a nutshell with the public work. So I'll be taking a more active role in that in the short term and trying to find a, is something that, to help that, us through the winter. I, mean, I saw your emails. That is that in the your report to come to so just the both the job description and the, mm -hmm. it is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think so. Right, so we'll talk about now and speak to that too. Uh, eight old business. I'm seeing none. All right, All right we'll move on. Nine B fiscal sponsor request community development corporation. I gave take this. You had a request from that we as a fiscal sponsor for a grant that the community development corporation would like to go after. Yeah, I'm not sure if 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 you guys need further explanation than the then the request that I sent was essentially, um, you know, obviously to receive grant funding need to be the proper entity. This, the Community Development Corporation is being formed and that's what this funding would enable it to do. Um, so uh, we would need to work with um, either another 501c3 or uh, my immediate thought was was the town. I don't think it's a heavy lift in, in terms of responsibility. I outlined what it would require in terms of staff time. Um, so my request is, would the town be willing to serve as, a, as that fiscal responsor to accept the funds? And then I would work with Debbie um, in terms of you know what, what that would entail. I'm strongly in favor of it, as long as Andy is, as long as Andy doesn't see a problem. No, they were pretty simple to report to when we had the last one. So I don't, it shouldn't be any, and, and they you know, gave her whoever would be responsible for that follow up. All you have ultimately, to, but all you have to do is sign the, the paperwork for the town, right. and then Debbie, what, how many hours is it for Debbie? Like an hour a month after the initial setting up of the checking account? Maybe. I wouldn't even imagine that. I mean, it depends how frequent the requests are for reimbursement. And yeah, and I'll try to, I'll really try to keep it minimal in terms of my request of her. And I try, I track and, and then she just notes in her memos, like, you know, in the, in the grant funding, what, what it's for. So, I mean, we've done this with, with several other grants. I mean, I've worked with her on several other grants. So I feel like we, we do that pretty smoothly and I don't think it would be a heavy lift at all. The only question I had was um, the period, the sponsorship period to end at the close of fiscal year 21, and then it says June 30th of this year. I'm assuming. assuming oh, sorry. Typo. Next year, right? okay. Typo. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. That was all I had. So that's about the only thing I would request is that it does end so it doesn't span into another yep. fiscal year. Yeah. That, that for certain, we'll make sure that that's the, the case. 
Yep. Okay. Do we need to make a motion or? I would, yeah. All right. Um, I'll make a motion that the town uh, goes through the grant request for the main community foundation on behalf of the community development corporation. Is that how you'd word it? Or well, to act as the fiscal sponsor. Ask for, as the yeah. fiscal sponsor for the main community foundation grant for the community development corporation. Startup expenses. Okay. Uh, uh, second motion. Yep. Any discussion? All those in favor? All right. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Thank you. Thanks, Gabe. 9D, approve special town meeting warrant. Hopefully I didn't have any typos in there. I didn't, I didn't know what day, what day you wanted to have it. Uh, we had the last meeting, we weren't sure. Well, I don't think we want to have it. Yeah, I don't think two weeks from now would be the week of Thanksgiving, right? Yeah, so I don't I'll think I'll probably have it in the first meeting or probably our only meeting in December. We could have it. The Tuesday after that would be 4 30. We could meet then. Do we want to do that or do we want to wait until December? Tuesday the 30th is fine with me. I don't know about anyone else. It should be fine for me. So we're just going to. Skip that 23rd meeting and then just meet on the 30th, right? Like the whole town meeting thing. We're not just gonna, I would assume, we're not gonna have a meeting the 23rd and the 30th, I don't think, right? no, no, no. We have we we'll just go town the meeting and then we'd have a regular. Okay, so we're just gonna wait. We're meeting. gonna wait till the 30th to have yeah, a last meeting. Okay, I think yeah, because it's Thanksgiving weekend, I feel that's, that's that, is, that is fine with me. The 30th should, is it, will we start we'll have at a special five town meeting at five? Okay. Yep, and then we'll have the Select for me straight. So she'll have to so, um uh, straight up. Andy has already got five. She'll have to correct that. Or someone does. Do we want to? I'll have to correct that. Yeah. Yes. Is that right. fine? Five thirty. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Just come in and sign it. And first thing in the morning. Or Sometime. First thing. In the morning. So we have something to sign mm -hmm. in the morning. You said this. This is warrant. This warrant. Okay. When it gets redone, oh, probably sure what? Come up by. Uh, will you have it? Will you have it ready by? Will you have it ready by what nine? Uh, seven thirty probably. Nine o'clock for sure. I'm uh, going on the eight forty-five. So it'll be ready by then. I'll be up here at one. So I move that we approve the special town meeting warrant for the thirtieth of November at five uh, at five o'clock for the articles presented. Second. All those in favor? And report of town manager. Um, same vacancies and, and then since our last meeting, um, more uh, the road commissioner and with um, Kelly's passing. Um, but the, I don't know if you have any thoughts on how to acknowledge or pay respects to, to Deli if you wanted to do something. I saw they have a memorial coming up. I don't know if you want to donate anything towards that or something, but probably should do something um, for him. We usually do something for the family when an employee passes. What do we do? Yeah, what have we done in the past? Yeah, I, 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 it ranges. I mean, something as, as little as flowers. Um, I, I did see that where there was a call for um, help, for help with the food for the. I imagine it's going to be a pretty sizable service. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know if we want to think about with the selectman's um, contingency or fund if you wanted to authorize a certain amount of money to help go towards towards that. Who's in charge of that? You said call candy. Candy, candy yeah, but, right. Yeah. Um, I would suggest that we donate um, some money to the food to help pay for some food. And I don't know if anybody would want to do flowers too. Or is that fine by me? Do they have a, I mean, injection? Are they asking for donations for anything else besides the food? Well, I've heard so far. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, if there was something we wanted to donate in lieu of flowers or right, like else. if you wanted money to go right. to elder care or just I don't you know, know. Do something know. else I like that. Was, I, I mean, I I, just, I can't remember the obituary. I can't remember. When is the service? Saturday at 11 at the this church. church. The, the 20th. So a week from Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, memorial gifts in his memory may be made to Vinyl Haven Elder Care. Oh, okay. Uh, Maybe we yeah. should do that instead. I would say, I would, yeah. I, would, I would rather see the money go to that than flowers. Just oh, absolutely. Yeah. Flowers yeah. are great, but. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I mean, case, now that we know there's a place to send a donation. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Saturday the twentieth. So, how month. much do we usually do? Is it like fifty or hundred or how much? What is the typical? And for what the board's done in the past, there's no typical. It doesn't generally happen. But um, you know, I said in the past, it's we've contributed flowers before when someone mm -hmm. in the family the workforce has passed. But I move we, whatever. I mean, the town contributes a hundred dollars from the selectmen's reserve or contingency yeah. to vital yeah. health care services. Okay. And, oh. and <laughs> motion made and seconded. Well. Let's vote on that one first. All in favor. Okay. Do you want to make a separate motion? With well, I was wondering if that you still want to send money for to Candy Barton for food or the hundred dollars to the I, I made a motion for elder care. For right. Elder I'm care. asking if you want to do. Uh, you can make a motion. I, do you want to do a donation for, for yes, food also? I, I okay. I would yes. like to make a motion that we send a check to Candy Barton to help cover costs of food for Delhi's funerals. How much? 50 bucks. $50. I'll in the amount them. of fifty dollars, I'll send them. I'll second that. Seconded. All those in favor? All right. All right. Um, have you gotten any? I see. Again, you have the thing about the benefit package and wages. Have you gotten any more info from what other towns do? I know. I know you were. I think trying I gotten, to get a couple more responses the last time, and I don't know if you had or not. I think I'd gotten one more. I think I'm up to six now. So um, still not really anything too definitive. No. Um, I mean, for the budget process, I, I mean, I have a conference coming up. It's like a one day thing down in Fort Wayne. That's all. You know, perhaps it's something I can get a quick pull on folks when they're all in the same place. Um, at least help with the budget. I just won't have it before. I mean, it's nothing we can really do this year anyway, is it, to raise wages and in the middle of the year it'd be yeah. tough we'd have to sort of go back and look at the budget pretty close and figure out where you know if we, if we raise the wage then we but we, it's something we should, it's something we should definitely else. talk about in january february when we get oh, yeah. to the budget season for mm -hmm. all these positions so it's, yeah it's, yeah, it's going to be the it's going to be the top priority i would think mm -hmm. for our next budget i mean if minimum wage in maine right now is 12 15 and goes up a certain percentage for inflation and if inflation's seven percent, it's going to be thirteen dollars an hour, and I mean that's pretty much what we pay now. So I mean that's not right. You can go work at McDonald's and get fifteen dollars an hour. You're not mm -hmm. going to. And I think they're giving five hundred dollars signing bonus yeah. too. So. Yeah. yeah, no, I'm just saying we definitely yeah. need to look at this one when we get to yeah. that season. Oh, and in some of the private sector. I mean, there used to be, uh, you know, the benefit of working for local government or government was you. you, know, you you couldn't compete with the wages in the private sector, but you had good benefit packages. And now we're not competing with the wages anymore than we couldn't before, but we're really not competing with them. And some of those private sectors are offering benefits. Um, so we're not really at all competitive um, when you look at it where we are today from where it was a few years ago. Mm -hmm. so. um, fire any mess, we did have a quick meeting today. Um, with Mark and Pat and a couple of the volunteers, one from each department, um, just talking about recruitment and retention and trying to come up with some ideas. We've kind of been tiptoeing around it and tried some things here and there. Um, and Pat hosted a, a cookout back in the summer um, to try and get some folks with EMS and tried to have every, everyone on the crew bring someone with them that they thought might be interested in joining. And I think from that, I think we ended up with two or three. 
Um, that's, that's good. Uh, one of them is uh, moving away. Um, I don't know if the other one or two are still drivers, but I don't know if they've gone to it. But it's interesting going beyond that. Um, and on the fire, there has been a few newer ones. Um, you know, it's just the numbers are really low on both departments and you know, just worried about burnout um, of those that are in it. So they're signing up a lot and going a lot for certain things. Um, it's just something that we're just trying to figure out what can we do. Some of it's just the nature of it. There's a lot of training requirement and it hasn't helped. But this it's isn't increased. a vinyl even only issue, is it? It's no. a country-wide, statewide, everything. It's, a, it's mean, an issue everywhere. Um, you know, a lot of places have the luxury of mutual aid. Um, we don't. Um, what we do, it's just not as quick as most places. Right. Um, you got to wait for the boat to leave Rockland. Um, so, I mean, that's, yes. And it's just, how do we... Is there, I mean, do with it have you seen any good ideas anywhere in the state or anywhere in the country? To, yeah, to I mean, there's... It? There's certainly things out there, and it's not. And there's no one silver bullet for it. I mean, it really depends on the people. Um, you know, things like marketing, trying to just have more of a social you know, media presence on on it. You know, it's one thing that a lot of places are relying on. You know, younger people are just you know, more used to going to social media to find things. And um, so, it's been in the wind before. Tried other things. I think we need to try that. Um, show show the community that we're active, we're out there. Explain a little bit more about what it's like or what it takes to be on both services. Um, explain that there's levels of certification, and you, know, you don't have to be an interior firefighter to join the fire department. There's other things that you, know, you can be and get to. If you want to get that far, you can. Um, I think just trying to explain some of that. There's a new um, training facility in St. George. They just built. I don't think I saw that. And there's a live burn facility there um, that firefighters can go to and train how to go into structure fires. Um, it's nice that it's right there. Yeah. And there's one at one point I thought it's going to be built in Castine, I thought, but I don't know if that's happened yet. Um, so it, it's just trying to figure out what can we do. It's not, we're not in alone, but just worried about where we're at. Um, I don't know if anyone's seen the surveyors around, or at least one of them around. I don't know if it's just the one or a couple, but so there was a guy picking his stuff up just at the end of the dock, which I thought was he probably should have picked it up a little bit earlier because I barely <laughs> saw him. But that's just me. He had his vest and stuff on, but it seemed like he pushed it a little bit longer than he should have today. That's all. Uh, so we are, I've got two or one unanswered email from um, from EBA um, on what they need still from us. Um, Last, they wanted a letter, the lawyers wanted a letter, um, just clarifying that the funds we're putting up for matching funds are ours and are committed and we're not bringing in other new, potential new sources of funding to, for the match. Um, so I did draft that letter again, um, so we had one before. Um, so just hopefully that, we want, I just haven't heard if that satisfies their needs. So hopefully that does, but we're still working through that. Um, Again, once we get that finalized, we can go um, stronger into the northern borders paperwork and finalize that. Um, we are, of course, still also waiting to see if we're successful in any of the congressional funding. Uh, and both of those still sit in their respective committees. So, <laughs> which we could be as slow as them. <laughs> um, could happen at any time. Could happen at any point. It could. It could, you know, again, whether it's one, none, or both, I don't know. But um, with the northern borders, we were trying to kind of line up, uh, you know, scenario A, and we don't get any additional funding. So here's the $2 million project for northern borders, in which they're paying a million. Um, if we get one of them, here's what it would look like if we expanded the scope of work to include more drainage, sewer, or waste, or a water, drinking water project. Um, and then if a second one comes in similar, what that looks like. Um, it has to do with drinking water. Is that anything we could use the guardrail for? Um, I <laughs> can ask. Well, it's fair. It's drinking water. It's fair. I can ask. I just I, I don't know where the scope we the, the geographic scope we fit we have with Main Street. So I don't know how well, far you just said drinking that. water. Just yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it's worth asking. And same thing with the Bonnet Boat Project. I mean, because flood resiliency is sometimes tucked into the one of those programs. So well, I mean, if, okay. if that's anything, even if they just paid for the. The engineering yeah. work or something would be better yeah. than nothing. So. Yeah. Well, the, the funds 
we're supposed to get from the county, right? We could use that for the drug deal. We're supposed to get from the county, right? We're supposed to get. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're supposed to get one hundred sixteen thousand. You got be enough for a drug deal. Well, the that's from the state. Oh, that's we already got that, right? You got half of it. The other half we have to request um, in the spring, I think. Well, I would hope that would come. Our guard, or no? Yeah, I would think. But <laughs> um, we but have to. Yeah, I mean, we have to make sure it, it connects and is tied directly to the, oh, yeah, the yeah. rules, of the funding, and the high spend it. Right. So those are still, I believe, still an interim. Um, while they're an interim, you can spend it based on that. Um, we haven't had any serious discussions about how we or the town would like to see it spent. Um, presumably, it's something I would put it both ways. There's been suggestion and guidance that it, whatever your normal budgeting process is, it goes through that. And don't treat it like a grant. And then I've got others and colleagues that are saying we're treating it like a grant. So it's not clear one way or the other how it should be treated, but there's a big difference between the select board deciding alone versus the town meeting process, which is how we normally determine how appropriations are made. Yeah. I mean, so it's probably worth starting to think about, even with the interim rules, kind of you know, some point soon. Um, a list of projects. One do they thousand will go won't go very far, but it'll get some things. When done. do they think they'll have the final rule ready? Uh, I don't know. When do we have to spend the money by? Uh, we have to commit it to be spent by the December 31st, 2024, and actually have spent oh, it by I guess 2026. We got time, <laughs> but I was thinking if the garbage was wanted... something, we want to get done sooner rather than later. Yeah, I don't. I just... 55,000 we've received so far. Right. I don't, I don't know that that know. project would be eligible without going through that. I'd come initially, it's all, it's a, that those funds are supposed to be in response to the pandemic and so you're supposed ah, to be able yes. to the only right. infrastructure projects are um water wastewater and broadband well this is for water <laughs> it is for water um, <laughs> to and protect so water. it's a matter of making sure that it, it might work i mean there's a bunch of other projects that mm -hmm. certainly are you know good candidates for it if we sat and came up with a list okay um yeah. well i was just thinking if we wanted to start on that now we have the funds but if we want to go through the budget process we're not that far off from that either mm -hmm. so i mean i don't Think it's something that we get done before the budget spring season, time. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. yeah I'm right. guessing by the time we have to get like some someone to bid on it, someone to come out here, it's gonna be springtime before yeah, we can get it done anyway. So. Yeah. And he said he's gonna reach out yeah. to some people that knows just... about guardrails and see about getting us. Yeah, that so that nobody goes into the round hall either. Well, and what even with a guardrail, frankly, um, you know. It, it's a, it'd be a different design from what's there now, but even guardrails, people go through guardrails. If they're going too fast or yeah. have a piece of equipment or a truck too heavy, it's going to go through. Yeah. But they, yeah. there are huge pieces of granite there now, correct? Could you, in theory, put the guardrail in front of that so that if you went through the guardrail, you'd then hit the rocks? I don't um, know if that'd be enough for yeah, them. Yeah, I, I think it's on the edge of the road. You, you, you start taking the road. Okay. I mean, there is probably okay. three feet at most. Between the edge of the pavement and where the water is, in some spots, Maybe some places not less. Not much. Um, and the rocks are, you know, they two feet. They're not going to keep anything from going over them or to them. Not well, they did. Them. They did last when that. Well, it car did to did. a certain degree. I mean, it pushed the rock into the car stayed out. If <laughs> that's what a guardrail. Well, right? kind essentially of. what a guardrail. Yeah, right. right. It gives a little and keeps the car. But fixed. the guardrail would definitely be. Stronger than the rocks, I would assume, okay. from keeping a vehicle. And don't we have a problem anyway on the basin bridge? That we're not supposed to have granite blocks, as yeah, the, yeah. At least these got cables in front of them, so if you're going to hit the cable. <laughs> the ones that they hit the cable in theory can kind of the other ones where they're just granite blocks. Yeah, those um, need to be replaced with something <laughs> suitable. Sorry, I'm the, sorry I said that. What's Creed's, Creed's Cove? That's another one that needs. That to me is way more dangerous yeah. than. You have about this much. I, I, I mean, the rocks is slowly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's that's not going to stop the station going in there. Another one to pick up truck. Mm -hmm. So that to me should be on our list of priorities. <laughs> for... It's on, on a list. We've got a lot of priorities. And I guess perhaps <laughs> I'll just skip to my memo um, that's there. Um, I mean, we've got a, a lengthy list of road projects and construction needs, and um, I think either to fill out this year or for next year's budget process, this board and town needs to really 
look at what we spend for what we're expecting to have done and what mm -hmm. we spend and appropriate for road work and the projects that we have coming and think about treating that. Yeah, as when it you is. put it the way you put it, it is a pretty small amount for the amount of roads that we have budget. Yeah. I, mean, I never really looked at it that way. I mean, we've, I mean, we know what we've had. We know how we've had it structured in the past. And, and we know that there's still a long list of things we need to be done. Um, I really do think we're at a point where we need to have someone who's afforded the time and the salary to, I mean, to spend the time to really create the work plans that are necessary to see them get, get done. I mean, they're on our list. They're on our priority list, but we've got a lot of lists and I just, it's just not getting there. Um, and it's just an acknowledgement that, especially right now with the positions we have open, um, it's just not working the way it is. It's, it's going to cost some money to set it up that way if that's the way we think it, it would work. Um, but if you're running a three quarter or a million dollar business when you combine transfer station and, and road and, and think of that as our public works, if you will, yeah, and um, as some places do, and that's kind of my thought potentially is if we had a position that you know, as a director that oversees kind of both a foreman for each, we have a foreman at transfer station now, um. You know, and creating a foreman position as we have, but then having a director to really communicate, tie it together, and, and see these things through. Um, this might be something we're really capable of. And then that leaves, you know, the other two and a half million to, uh, to me to manage and work with. <laughs> so, I mean, acknowledging we have a lot of projects. Yeah. Do. And we yeah. I don't think we we haven't spent all of the road repair budget in the last years. It's not because we don't have a need for it, it's just we haven't had a chance to do it. Right. Um, and that creeds call I mean, name it. There's a bunch of them that have oh. been on the list for a long time. Yeah, and the non guardrail. And obviously we have a paving project. We haven't definitely ditch on the North Haven Road for the paving project mm -hmm. or culvert replacement. Right. And that goes back to you know having our equipment or a crew size to do ourselves or having the ability and you know, and flexibility and waiting for it to be done when you hire yeah. it out. Yeah, like somebody, somebody, who's a, somebody who is available on the outside to do the work. Right. You know, it's only... None of it's getting too far. Yeah, I mean, our, you know, you just go to, go to Rockburn and the number of contractors available for work mm -hmm. versus here. It's just, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. It's the price you pay for living on an island, as they told us. Yes, they keep telling. <laughs> they continue to tell us. <laughs> so it leaves us with the rest of this year. Um, I don't. I mean, I have some recommendations there. Um, I don't know what your thoughts are on those at this point. Um, I'm hopeful, maybe that I can help. Find, hopefully, find someone to step in and act as a foreman. You know, at least to get us through winter. Um, I think that we should follow your recommendations. I mean, you kind of have a finger on. Mm -hmm. better than we do you're here yeah, every right. day i mean you see this i think i think there's no sense to hire a, a full-time public works foreman if we're going to try and combine the jobs for next year because then we're just going to have to rehire someone if mm -hmm. you could find i think i mean i'm all do we need to make a motion or just kind of just say i mean if, if I mean, i'm comfortable with, with that i mean we have a budget it's not asking you to appropriate more money it's just mm -hmm. you know kind of restructuring you know what's within it and well for the rest it. of this year i think we should definitely i mean not this this calendar year i mean not like until or like another month two months or whatever mm -hmm. yeah i mean we've been trying to find someone for what mm -hmm. three four five months at right. least now right and, and that was a uh, starting at twenty dollars now huh that was starting at twenty dollars now for the performance position yeah. so what what would this full time well, well this would be director. part time for the rest of the year. Then we'd have to figure out what the full time road commissioner. Well, slash... Yeah, but we're gonna start. Yeah, I'm gonna. You're gonna post gonna a full -time, the, the full time position soon. And, right? uh, I mean, I'd like you to review the draft of a new position, <laughs> and I need to come up with that. Okay. And hopefully for the next meeting, I can have that. And my, and as it says there, I mean, if December twenty first is or December first is probably a little. Little ambitious, um, but certainly by the end of the calendar year, it'd be good to be able to be in a position to be able to post something if we want to go that route. Um, and then I'll have a better chance of letting you know what the cost for that position salary wise would be. But 
I'm assuming we're talking somewhere between 55 and 65, is my guess. And how much what is the road commissioner right now? The part time 10 hour a week commissioner, road commissioner's position is 15,000 a year. So it would be an extra 40, 50,000 dollars on budget mm -hmm. on top of that, right? Because mm -hmm. presumably that would be coming out of, off the budget, right? right. Yeah. 55 to 60, you said. That's my guess. Yeah. And then benefits, obviously. Mm -hmm. right. Benefits retirement. Yeah, right, yeah. Social Security. I mean, uh, with the position certainly comes, I mean, expect, I mean, again, being able to hold accountable. Here's, here's the work plan we're expecting to be done. And mm -hmm. again, trying to force that budget process to really start with the goals and like, what are we looking to get done this year? Having those capital projects mm -hmm. on there. And, and then as soon as the budget's passed or just before mm -hmm. having that work plan laid out and really being able to know if we can or can't get to it. I think some of it is we assume we can get to it. And then we realize we can't, it's now too late in the year to try and hire to have it done. Right. So, you know, being able to plan for that and having, having that opportunity to see the, you know, six months at a time maybe, and just know that we can or can't get to certain things. Mm -hmm. But that the, the expectation would be that that position would be, you know, accountable for. Right. Yeah, take most of those metrics, and that's something I've been trying to find a way for us to get to. Is really when you when we have our goal or our work plan for the year is coming up with, so we can share with the board where we are quarterly or monthly on that work plan and how we completed it. Right now, it's just a general list of we know we got to get all this done, or we're, we're just chasing papers. It seems um, so, you know, so. with that, I think with that position, we'd be in a good spot with the right people in it, right person in it. To, well, so then they, they'd be in charge of the right? dump too and all the fees and making sure everything's going right up there too, correct? It can be. I mean, I don't know in the short term. I mean, I think emphasis needs to be on the road in my mind, thinking long, well, long I mean, term. We have a big project going on at, up right. in the dump at some point. So, I mean, I think long term, it wouldn't be... hurt to have like that position kind of be overarching for public works and have it mm -hmm. look as though transfer station and public works and have that person be the supervisor for both sets of employees um you know going forward looking in the future you know the next five five years or so probably having some cross you know, the, the ability for well like I, well that's what i was thinking if we hire someone to work at the dump maybe they could also help plow in the winter right. on some storms you know maybe that could be part of the job mm -hmm. description in the future instead of you just work here you you're a public works employee but you your 40 hours a week are hard to dump. But if there's a storm, you might get called in. Right. I, mean, I think it's worth considering as we, you know, whenever that time comes to you know, down the road, I think I just want to be able to set us up for that's where I think it's headed. And it's not threatening anything right now or changing anything right now, other than just saying, just let's get the right person in there, get the structure set up and start thinking about that and help do that you know, in the next five years, probably. You know, as it is, we still have a, a short, we don't even have a short list at, that I know of for plowing um, for winter. We have you know, our full-time workers, but I'm not aware of anyone that has expressed interest to Dan about, about plowing, helping on Main Street or plowing the roads that he has plowed in the past for us um, up off of North Haven, or the North End and off of Calderwood Neck. And he was usually going in and plowing on his own um, Zeke's Point. Um, Along the bottom, the end of Young's Road, and going out towards Sharon's there, and then Crockett's River and Tiptoe and Fishhead. So if our one of our trucks, you know, just acknowledging we didn't couldn't spread it that thin, and we just needed the extra help, so it'd be something we need to do, and you know, may need to if we can't find it, and need to prioritize certain roads, and it just may or may not take longer to get to some of them, depending on the storm and who's available. Can only do what we can do. Right. I mean, and if there's like an EMS call, then they'll have to go plow in front of the EMS. I mean, they'll have to mm -hmm. be in contact with something like that. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's only so much we can right. do with a crew of a certain size. Mm -hmm. Unless yeah. people people want to step up, I'm I'm no plow truck driver. Mm -hmm. You don't want to see me drive one of those. You'll be out of I don't think you'll be driving a Silverado. You'll be out. You'll be out of plow truck pretty quickly. <laughs> And I'm I'm hoping, I mean, knock on wood, but I mean, things do break in the wintertime. That's when they're likely to break. But I'm really hoping that it's a mild winter because, you know, with the shortage of 
car parts and truck parts. I'm just worried about what that looks like when that happens. So um, probably when everyone's up against it, it's probably not going to be great. Uh, going back to the other parts of the port, the storm on, the, on Halloween, um, we put together um, some estimates of what the, it cost. And so right now, just on the public works side, I think we were close to seven grand. I think Mark, I don't remember if that, I don't think that included Mark's firefighters time where they were pumping out salaries and stuff. The better part of 10 hours or so, I think by between the pole accident. And what about, um, was it not just pole accident, but like when trees fell on poles, is that included in that 7,000? If they responded to it, did, I mean, our guys were, we had two of them that were out on public works that were just kind of clearing brush off the road during the storm. And then um, the number also includes some follow-up, um, uh, trying to restore certain roads, some roads back to the pre-storm condition they refer to it as. So a few washouts. Um, luckily the Folly Pond culvert didn't wash out. Um, I don't know if any of you went up that way during that <coughs> storm, but there was um, pretty close to 18 inches of water um, on the pond side of that road. Um, and as that road kind of slopes up going through that curve, there it was still probably six inches on that upper part and it was really flowing pretty good. Um, what, just the culvert wasn't big enough to handle it or is it um, blocked? During the, with a four inch rainfall, it was um, a combination of the culvert probably, but mostly the, there was an active beaver or beavers um, that are working against us. Um, and they're up there, our guys are up there, between our guys and Will, um, a couple times a week trying to, keep that clear. Um, there's a couple of- I kind of thought that might have been an issue, but I wasn't 100% sure. There's a couple of um, cage traps up there. I mean, there's no heads, there's not, they're not lobster traps, but they're caged mm -hmm. up with weights to put in front of the culvert. It was something that DEP suggested so that water can still pass through. The challenge and problem is that leaves in the other sediment that are there with that much water yeah. are getting stuck up against the mesh. And right. once that happens, it still, we gotta get that clear. And, and I think it also, the beavers are still build, trying to build around that, but you can kind of fish some of that stuff out of there. Um, but that is a culvert that fortunately didn't wash away during that storm. It, I, for some reason, don't know how, why it didn't, but um, it needs to be, age-wise, it needs to be replaced. It would have been done before the paving project, but they um, needed certain permits because it's considered a stream. Um, and so <laughs> is it going to be the next time it gets replaced? Is it going to be a bigger size? Is that what Hopefully. you're Hopefully. Yeah, I think for a lot of them, when we replace them, we do, we can upside, you know, up size. How up. big is that? Three feet? No, I don't think so. Probably two. Oh, that seems uh, bigger than that. Probably three. I thought it was only quite that two, but somewhere in there. I could use a Google hat. Well, I don't think Will said how big that is. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it is good size. I mean, another thing we're thinking of is trying to, you know, is there a way to kind of alter that that culvert opening so it's more like the one at the ball ground? Um, so the water kind of builds to a certain level, then kind of can fall Spills into on. it. Um, you know, and they're presumably less likely to build a dam on top of it. Um, and if they did, it would be easy enough to. Is that, I mean, we can trap those and presumably take them to some other location on the mainland and get rid of them not they can be trapped um, not lethal if... i'm not saying kill them i'm just saying i take them yeah that's i think will has some them. right people that take them to a farm we'll trap, state. We'll trap them no i mean i mean i've seen i've seen someone had one in a trap at fisherman's friend up here before taking it on the ferry in the morning but i didn't know they can be trapped i think I think Will said we were outside of the someone said we were outside of the trapping season right now. I think at this point, but I think the biggest thing too is he's as long as they're not in round pond, yeah. he kind of lets them do their thing. Do let me know. We don't want them to build. Right. Clearly, don't want them to build around that culvert, but right. don't we really, really don't want them in round pond. Yeah. So yeah, trying yeah. to keep them. Just, yeah. Just to yes, we like reason. it over here. Mm. <laughs> These trees are better over here. <laughs> yeah. But Reminder that the sheriff's contract is um, active through this December. Um, and it's up in to renew that, presumably. So just a reminder, I don't know if there's things that you're thinking of that um, any changes or things you need to question or 
how you think it's going the way it's been, I mean, the exception of having a second spot filled. Um, just tell people, you know, how you think how the contract is and whether we need to change, ask for any changes in that. And I still don't think people are truly happy with what we've got. I mean, there isn't much we can do if they can't hire more. If they people. can't hire anymore, we're, we're, we're not going to be able to. I still, I still think, to I still think that he should not leave his car at the ferry boat when he leaves. I agree. Now. That's just a I asked should be him about that. And he said that they told him that's where they wanted to leave it. Well, they've had someone coming. So, the, the Chad's not here. There somebody else there's here someone there. else here on the days he's not. They've been coming during the day. And so if it's not parked there, then where will it park? But people aren't going to, I mean, people are going to know. People are going to know. Yeah, they'll find the new not. spot. Everybody yeah. knows. I mean, it's it just seems like it's just a red flag for people to go. So if we've, we've oh, been yeah. getting more seven day coverage than mm -hmm. earlier in the year, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, recently last, it's been. The last month, I'd say, pretty close to seven days a week. So if, they, if, if there is someone out here seven days a week, mm -hmm. Over time, you would think things would, but they're not out here seven nights a week, right? But it is what it is, and we can only get what we can get. So, yeah, unless somebody's willing to go to Peace Academy, <laughs> <laughs> I'd do it, but isn't paying us. I'm too oh, old. that'd be a terrible idea. I'm too old. <laughs> oh, that'd be terrible. Terrible. So if anything comes up between now and now, yeah. anything between now and the next meeting, if you need another copy of the contract, I can send it out. Um, if you can have any suggestions for changes by the next meeting, then um, that'll give us a month to iron it out with the sheriff. Uh, well, are they are they proposing any changes? Um, not that I, I'm just trying to remember. Um, there were some big budget changes for Knox County. That portion of the budget for next year, but I think most of that was on the jail side. Um, I don't think I think there's a possibility there might be some wage increases. But I mean, um, they're not asking that, for like big stipend increases or anything. That's what basically the only thing that would come on our side. I'm just asking if they were pushing for any of that stuff because it seems like we're fairly generous on the housing and the electricity subsidies. I, I mean, they don't they don't use any of them because they haven't anyone out here. So well, they must be using some of them. That, that, that works for us. Uh, so that makes sense. That housing allowance, they must be using that, aren't they? When they're oh, we're just we have one rental that we pay for. That's right. it. Well, I'm sorry, I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, you will send a copy of the contract you said. Okay. I mean, the same as I have to send it out to all of us. Do you know how much? We've spent on the contract in this fiscal year. Not off the top of my head. Probably not close to what we have. In I, I, yeah, that's that's kind of what I was trying to get at. Like, what did we spend last year on the contract? And what did we spent last this year. The last. Um, invoice, we had some funds left we just, over. We just paid an invoice in here. I want to say it was like forty five hundred bucks for the month. Because that whole contract value was, was one, like something. something. Well, that yeah. was if we got a second call. Mm -hmm. So if we if we got everything we wanted, it was going to be like one hundred fifty thousand or more. Well, that, that included the like the housing. Well, yeah, yeah, it was for right. everything. For, for two deputies, we we have definitely not. But if we're paying Knox that. County forty five hundred dollars a month, that's only a third of that, and then the housing's another. Be like seventy two thousand. Maybe yeah, we probably at half of it spent maybe seventy five. Yeah. So it was sixty two hundred, and that covered um, end of August and half of September. So yeah, even if that's yeah, we're on we're and include some of that some extra of some overtime. I mean, with the overtime and the rates that they're at, I mean, it, that, that'll add up pretty quick when they're doing that. Yeah. Um, some of it, if it's directed by the sheriff, is 50-50. If it's at our request, it's hundred percent. Um, how it generally was hundred percent on. The what time. do they get overtime? Is it double time or time and a half? Um. It's time and a half regularly. If it's a holiday, it's I think double or triple. Um, and then if there is an island, if they're out for like the day, there's like a $75 a day stipend that they get. Um, yeah, some of those add up pretty quick in here. Now they don't they don't get that extra stipend if there's if there's full contract being filled and we're paying the housing. There's no, they don't get that daily one. There's a I think that same $25 a day if they work four consecutive days or plenty extra hundred, I think, if they 
to the power stories. But I'll send that out tomorrow. And there's not, I can't really think of anything off the top of my head where we could really change at this point. It's very really received what we asked for. So and that's not, I mean, not a knock on them. They're, send, they're, send, they're sending the reports, I guess, daily. But. Oh yeah, um, I haven't drafted the letter yet. Um, in the, towards the back of my report, I had um, Rick Petrie, who's with um, Atlantic Partners EMS, um, kind of our you could kind of go to them for questions on any of the um, protocols for the state. Um, so, they, so we're going to draft a letter as a town to send to Mills and. Our representatives, yeah, golden thing, um, fluffy thing, I guess. kind of putting some pressure on the state. I mean, they're not, you know, unaware of it. It's just kind of trying to put it front and center for them this year. I mean, to try and do something. You know, are there things the state can do to incentivize or encourage or um, you know, make easier? I mean, so again, some of the training stuff. I mean, it is what it is. You have to do it. But you know, like on EMS, it went from recertification every three years to every two years last year. Um, and for volunteer services, it's it's a pretty big, big lift. Um, it's a lot of a lot of training events. Um, you know, we're able to do it, but for those for those volunteers that are wanting to do it and can do it sometimes, it makes it really hard for them to be able to commit the time it needs to be fully certified. Um, but yeah, I think it's just trying to call attention. We can I can I'll draft something up for that and send it. Um, I assume you're okay with us yeah. sending in for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, other than that, just a couple bunch of committee meetings. You know, we're past summer, so the committees are active. Um, mm -hmm. Housing committee met last night. Um, trying to get them suggest that they think they're getting close to a point where they can provide kind of a list of some recommendations or next steps for the board to consider. Um, I think they're hoping they're going to meet again the 29th. So they'll have that presumably that list presumably in the December meet one of the December meetings um, for next steps. And so there's been some good information. They heard from someone from Penquist yesterday about uh, you know what what housing projects look like for them when they do development in places. Um, and before that, the report from Mary, which I think I sent out to you. Mm -hmm. um, so they'd like to be able to give a quick overview of the report and what they're what they've learned and what they think the next steps could be for the town to consider. Put them on any agenda whenever they're ready, I would assume. Mm -hmm. Okay, Veterans Day Thursday. Uh, it'll be closed on our end. Uh, the appeals board has their meeting um, Thursday night. I believe. Um, What's uh, on the agenda? Presumably to make a decision on the variance request that um, came in um, for Justin, Grant, and Jake. Um, they had the public hearing two weeks ago. I think the fourteenth, almost four weeks ago. Um, so they should, they're at a position. I think they're in a position now where they can make the decision. They had to do that within thirty-five days of the hearing. Um, Mid Coast Economic Development District, um, the 18th, and then the Mid Coast Managers Meeting, the 19th, and then um, town, everything's closed again the 25th and 26th. Oh, that's already making the month go fast. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. What was our meeting the 30th? Mm -hmm. Yes. At five, right? Five, 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 five. 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 <laughs> um, 11 reported members. Einstein. All right. I'm going to be adjourned. <laughs> Second. <laughs> <All's fair. laughs> Take long for that motion, doesn't it? Finest kind. Finest kind.